Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran, and today we are taking a look at a Ukraine ambush of a Russian armored column. This is an older video, so it's outside, shot outside of Kiev. But more importantly, I'm going to be breaking down just how the Ukrainians do a modern ambush using what's called combined arms warfare. Let's get into it. So as you can see here, oh, this this video, right, link is in the description. Uh, Russian convoy is about to be outside Kiev. This is a fair warning. It does show military vehicles under fire. Also, do me a favor, guys, before we get too far into it, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't mean you're going to see every video I make. Um, but I do have this dream of getting to 100K subscribers, and I know if everyone who watched this video hit that sub button, I would do it and get my little silver plaque. Proved my wife that this is a real job. Okay, so these guys are, so again, they're, they're sort of, there's some speculation that's done by whoever put this video together. Um, there's all sorts of reasons. There could be tanks on the side of the road. They could be um, Ukraine Ukrainian tanks that were taken out uh, by Russian aircraft. They could be an advanced party, a scouting party who was meant to secure the area before the main body moved in, right? The fact that this, uh, the fact that you're, you know, scouting party didn't return is should have been a clue to the Russians that things may not go as planned. Okay, so Russian convoy maneuvering south into the village, right? They so again, there's a. I think it's reasonable to believe that there is a fairly high level of threat if indeed those are russian tanks that were fairly recently destroyed and if they were a scouting vanguard so you would expect the russians to have a pretty high combat posture and they're moving in right okay so it seems like this is definitely some sort of vanguard uh it's come under attack some sort of screening element or scouting element. It's come under attack. It's off to the side here. It looks like it had to do some evasive maneuvering and is now trying to get itself uh, out or outside of this kill zone. But as they say, it's on. It, it says it's on fire. This one is definitely on fire. This one back here, it's winter. This could literally be just exhaust of the engine running hard. So I won't say that one's on fire, but that one almost certainly is. Okay, so... A Russian convoy reaches the village, right? and it looks like they conclude correctly, I suppose, that things are bad. You can see there's been a lot of maneuvering as this convoy tries to turn around. But this is what really I think is interesting about the Russians. They recognize that this is a high threat environment. Some of their tanks have been taken out. They've decided the environment's so dangerous that they're actually going to withdraw. And yet, look at their security posture. Every single main gun on these tanks is facing forward. In fact, as far as I can tell, maybe some of these APCs are looking right, maybe, but no one's looking left. There's the security situation is just really poor. These three tanks, every single tank is facing down the road. Not a one of them is attempting to even look, even try to just observe if there's a threat coming from any of these buildings. And that is just absolutely unfathomable to me. Even if the tanks couldn't engage, say the targets were too close. One, a lot of these tanks have secondary machine guns to defend themselves at closer distances. But two, just being able to call out, say, hey, I see three people in this house with a RPG or something. Anything, any a, a situational awareness is going to provide some value to your tank formations. So the fact that the Russians seem to be, it's just, they do appear not to understand that this is a combat environment, despite the fact that there's clearly destroyed tanks. There's clearly combat that's taken place here. Yep, facing back the way they came, facing the same direction. Boom. Okay. Let's see if we can back this up just a sec. So this is a probably an artillery round, right? We can't really see it. It's moving too fast for even the frame, right? You see this frame here, nothing. This frame, so it passes all the way through this field in less than one frame and impacts right here, right next to this this uh, now trail tank. 
Why is this so important in an ambush? Well, in an ambush, you always want to initiate it with your most casually producing weapon. You want to start every ambush with the biggest shock and awe and do the most destruction while the enemy is at their most surprised, right? Every second after that initial initiation of the ambush, right, your enemy is going to get more and more aware of the fact they're under attack and where the attack is coming from. So, opening it up not even with a light infantry weapon but choosing to open it up with artillery is brilliant and it really shows that the ukraine forces someone out here you know this is extremely close to this tank and to get that close on an initial shot with artillery means probably two things are happening one the artillery is pre-positioned someone has already given the exact coordinates to the artillery team and has said, hey, listen, these this is exactly where these rounds want to go. We just want to call out, hey, put rounds on, they're called TRPs, target reference points. Put rounds, fire for effect, target reference point alpha. Maybe it's uh maybe it's this intersection here for some reason. Maybe it's you know right across from the school. But either way, you call in, hey, TRP alpha, the guns are already have the coordinates programmed in they just pull the trigger and hit fire so there's no bracketing there's no walking rounds onto the target there's just 155s coming down onto these tanks it also means that there's infantry that have set this up right that have confirmed that this trp and that are watching these tanks right infantry are out here and they've so they've told the artillery hey listen tanks are in position it's possible the drones are doing it as well, but you guys know as well as I do, these drones don't have especially long ranges, so they could they are almost certainly being operated by uh, light infantry somewhere in the general area. Boom. And there you go. This is the other thing that makes it perfect. If your goal is to destroy an armored column, taking out the first and trail vehicle is the way to do it and that's because now look these this pretty dense armored column has to maneuver past either scrunch up and one at a time filter past this destroyed tank or scrunch up and filter past this destroyed tank so they're going to have a much it's going to take them much longer to filter out of the ambush kill zone and because you know the top and bottom the artillery is going to have a very even time they know the left and right limit it's going to be very easy for them to traverse and put rounds between those two yep they fire off a thermobaric at something i guess Ah, okay. And you see now, only now, when they've induced all this chaos, do the light infantry come into the fight. Here's a projectile. Again, this is edited a little bit, so it's possible the light infantry has been involved much earlier and much longer. I imagine that they've been watching for a long time and are probably directing these artillery strikes. And only when the chaos is at its max are they starting to engage with their projectile weapons, right? They're targeting, of course, the armored personnel carriers, because if you've been in this video, if you've seen any of my videos, you know that the one thing that the Russians fail to do in a lot of their engagements is use infantry supporting armor, right? Infantry, uh, light infantry, guys with rifles, they can really, really deal a lot of damage, really counter uh, armor killer teams, three-man teams that are deploying anti-armor weapons. So what do the Ukrainians do? They know that the light infantry need to take out this armored personnel carrier where the Russian light infantry might be hanging out as well. So that's what they target. Very, very smart. Very, very well thought out. They go after the APC, meaning that there's not going to be any infantry that can deploy to support these tanks to help start clearing out areas of the village and you can see they are in a full panicked retreat uh doesn't appear again to be any sort of bounding returning fire none of these tanks are even pointed at the direction the enemy came from that's just incredible to me as a, a u.s trained soldier um but a real testament to the fact that the power of a well-coordinated ambush, right? The panic and tunnel vision when high explosive rounds are going off around you when there's attackers coming from multiple directions in multiple sort of uh, dimensions, right? Artillery, indirect fire, direct fire, anti-armor, light, uh, small arms fire. 
combining it together can produce a really shocking effect and can really induce panic, especially in undertrained troops. And you can see the APC and the tank just had to be left behind entirely, right? So you can see here, this I think is a great illustration of how just the psychological effects. At the end of the day, these tanks still had a tremendous, tremendous advantage in firepower. And if they had just kept pushing, they may have been okay, especially if they had pushed into the Ukrainian infantry or attempted to clear out some of these areas. But because they didn't, right, because of the psychological effects of a combined arms ambush involving all different types of, of weapon systems to get, working together can just induce total panic and total, uh, they turned around a column of dozens and dozens of tanks with, as far as we can tell, a handful of artillery shells and one or two uh, rocket launchers or anti-armor weapons. Yep, there's probably the light infantry pointing out that this Russian BMP, and again, they probably went after this. You can see that this is going to be a gun that's just more likely to really cause trouble for light infantry troops. A very successful ambush, perfectly executed, using all the tools at their disposal, right? And there's the tank. So just a true, a true testament to the skill of the Ukraine armed forces, even early in the war, just to just how incredibly prepared they were to engage Russian forces, right? They, the Ukrainian military was trained for one thing and one thing only, to repel a Russian attack. And it shows. Anyway, guys, thanks so much to our patrons. If you want access to some exclusive content, check out Patreon. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one.